Just got to say, uh, the stalker who lives next door, his name is Pedro, looks a little bit like Kevin Smith. And uh, the difference between him and Kevin Smith is Kevin Smith writes his own goddamn movies and doesn't wait around for me to write one for free. Dogma is on my perfect movie list. I was about to hang an exception on the Home Alone joke. I mean, hey, that was a good movie, but that's objective and it was still a good joke. Why hasn't Salma Hayek written a movie yet? She wouldn't need divine intervention. Salma Hayek can do anything. I will hear no arguments on this matter. I had to pause twice during the scene when Bethany runs into a pond and screams, why, what do you want from me? I hate you. Wow. We all have those moments at God. I don't think of it as God anymore, more like society, whoever is standing in my way of making movies. They're not gods, they're people. I certainly feel like running screaming into a pond almost every second of the day. If only Alan Rickman would appear walking on water to make me feel better. Telling her she had to, it, he had to reveal Jesus's divine mission and eventual crucifixion to him when Jesus was 12. Make it all not true is delivered so perfectly. Alan was reliving the scene destroying a child's future in front of him. Be who you always were. Just be this too, now and then. Made me break down sobbing. I miss him so much, I choked. Alan did this for me when he edited My Name is Rachel Corey into a play. He took his characters so much to heart because he wasn't an actor. Didn't start acting until his 40s. He was a graphic designer before that, in the days before Photoshop. I can see how the jobs are related. Creating graphic scenes so vivid in performance. They're composed like, like music, drawn like art a whole part of himself. Kevin Smith writes with such emotional honesty. Capturing such a perfect performance on film must have been so life-affirming. I'm glad he made this movie around the time he got married and his daughter was born. Took a heart attack several decades later for him to get healthy, though. The platypus enthusiast title cards show the deep Catholic shame Kevin Smith had to slog through to get there. Shame holds us back more than anything. It's okay to feel ashamed of bad deeds, but there's nothing bad about dogma. Not even the shit demon. Clever, really. All the shit from criminals on Golgotha form one of the grossest demons of all time. Ironic, it was produced by Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Kevin is giving away all of his royalties from Dogma to a charity called Women in Film. So buy those movie muffins and remember to trademark characters. Such a stellar Mickey Mouse parody deserves it. I glanced at the Fran Drescher letters on my desktop and tried to imagine what it would have been like if I had gotten into a meeting with the AMTPT during the strike. It would have been a bit like the movie scene in Dogma. I'd wear my long black coat and point fingers and deliver delicious takedowns, bring an onion to carve with a knife, but not a gun. I don't need a gun. My words are deadly enough. I could probably drown a demon in a sink without blessing it first. <laughs> Back to the shit demon. I love 
that uh, the fight with Jay and Silent Bob's gang is just the reactions of everyone else. <laughs> and like they couldn't afford a fight scene with the, the shit demon monster. Uh, it, <laughs> so, but like the reactions are so hilarious. You can kind of see what's going on. And uh, the shit demon is like tearing apart the gangsters. <laughs> and it just makes me really glad so much money went into the angel wings. Just pure art. Bartleby is my favorite Ben Affleck character. Very complex. It's like God is an ex-girlfriend he's desperate to get back with. I could have changed my whole life if Matt Damon had given me that walrus and carpenter speech that he gave that nun. Dreamy, really. Ben watches a couple reuniting at an airport gate, and this is like one of the last scenes in movies that was possible before 9-11. It mirrors the end. I love the scene in the parking garage between Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. It's like such a perfect environment for expressing the complexities of the emotional experience. Their voices echo so ominously. It sounds like magical and godlike. It's not right. It's not fair. Another moment we all want to scream at God. Don't we all have moments where our overzealous friend is about to do something reckless and you try to stop them like you sound like Lucifer? Go along with the plan anyway. One of Ben's best acting moments is right after Jay shoots off his wings and there's like a dismembered joint still moving and spurting blood out of the artery. And you can see the real anatomy of these things. And Ben reaches back and like feels the blood and looks at it and he's like laughing and crying at the same time. Like he got what he wanted, but he's not an angel anymore. His entire experience changed and there's no going back now. Then he starts laugh screaming. <laughs> Alanis Morissette is who I like to think of as God. Such good acting with no words. When Ben starts sobbing and saying he's sorry, she just looks at him like, I understand and I forgive you. I started sobbing again when she cleans up the bloody mess he made. We all want God to show up and make it all not true when there's a religious terrorist attack. Watching her just clean everything up, it's like miraculous. Beautiful to watch, even though it'll never happen in real life. God smells a flower and does a headstand against a tree and tweaks Bethany's nose when she asks, why are we here? Because there is no why. What if your kids asked that question? Because you love them and you did before they were conceived. I cried when everyone said goodbye at the end like the Wizard of Oz. Abortion and euthanasia are both heavy themes and dogma. Asterisk, there are a few plot holes that have bugged me for years. Like, why didn't the angels in heaven realize that John Doe Jersey was God trapped in a human body? Like, they talked about it in church, the place where the words are supposed to go directly to heaven. A lot of abortions are basically euthanasia. A fetus with no brain activity, sometimes without a freaking head? Like, why would you make a woman give birth to a dead baby if you didn't have to? Silent Bob carries dead Bethany, bleeding from an open stomach wound, and he lays her on the steps of the church like, is this what you want? Without legal abortions, this is what you get. Bethany died because she performed an extremely late-term abortion on God, and she did it herself. Women die when that happens. 
God was trapped on earth when they had an extremely important job to do in heaven. The moral of the story is, even after such tragedy, God healed Bethany and gave her the baby she always wanted because she died in self-sacrifice, like Jesus. Chris Rock's stand-up got less angry after dogma. He also grew up and had a family. He had his own vices to deal with. I got the line wrong. It's, I just think it's better to have ideas. You can change an idea. It's a lot harder to change a belief. The word change really resonated with me. I couldn't hold on to a belief where two plus two equals five. I'd already read 1984 and I knew where that leads. Math isn't an idea, but people's beliefs get so out of control, you don't even know facts anymore. You don't know yourself. Jesus's sense of self was radically changed when he ran away to his father's house. The scene where Jesus finds out he's the son of God, not in the Bible. Kevin wrote fan fiction that filled in the gaps. The tragic scene. Metatron must have made him feel better. In the Bible, Metatron didn't start out as an angel. The book of Enoch is Apocrypha, AKA a book cut out of the Bible. Enoch goes on a journey to heaven and becomes Metatron. Of course he related. Alan Rickman's entire existence changed halfway through his life. Discovering a resource of power he had all along. There's something Jesus-like about what he did with that power bringing Rachel Corey back to life. Harry Potter was carried up the steps of Hogwarts by Hagrid. <laughs> then he was dead and resurrected. Like, no wonder Christians burned that book. Nobody burned dogma, even though Kevin expected them to, maybe wanted them to a little bit. I think there was a protest outside a screening and Kevin joined them, gave an interview to the news like he was on their side. I respect that. I was laugh crying at the biggest laugh of the movie when Jay says, what the fuck happened to that guy's head? <laughs> Such a funny delivery in the middle of like the most intense scene. I had tears streaming down my face as I was just cracking up laughing. Jay was still on heroin during that movie. He eventually got sober and now he has a family of his own. Kevin wrote Jay's sobriety into his character because he loves him and he wants him to live. A folly ado for the ages. I went to see Dogma because Jay and Silent Bob from Mallrats were in it. I spent way more time at the mall goofing off and not buying anything than I ever did at church. Now I spend most of my time on movies. Is that because of Skev Kevin Smith? Quite a bit. Asterisk. Also, why didn't Bartleby realize Bethany was the last scion when they were talking on the train? Like, even if Azrael had cast a spell on her, wouldn't he think, like, why can't I see her past? Don't just tell me magic, Kevin. Also, happy Veterans Day to all who served. I unblocked Leonardo DiCaprio for his birthday and wished him a happy Veterans Day. I'm really glad this isn't our wedding anniversary. 